Has the environmental damage in the Gulf of Mexico from the BP oil spill been overblown? Reports this week show that the oil slick on the Gulf surface is dissolving rapidly. And Time Magazine reporter Michael Grunwald spoke to several marine scientists who say that the impact to the sea life and the ecosystem is not as great as everyone feared. Well, Michael Grunwald joins us now, along with Bernard Charbonnet, who is chairman of the New Orleans Port Authority. Let me go to Michael first. I must have been wrong because I kept asking people for weeks ever since this spell occurred, will this biodegrade? And I was told over and over again it would not biodegrade. It would be stuck with this, you know, up to perhaps 60,000 barrels a day, accumulate up to about 4 million barrels, would be stuck with it in perpetuity until it finally did something eroded. You're saying that the evidence so far is that it has eroded rapidly. Well, look, uh, you know, all oil is biodegradable. Some is more than others. This is pretty light stuff. It's not like that thick, tarry glop that you had in the Exxon Valdez. Now, there's still a lot of oil in the water, and uh, you know we don't know what we don't know. There could be really severe long-term impacts. But when you look at the wildlife count so far, and you look at how many marshes have actually been affected by the oil so far, um, there really isn't a lot of evidence of severe environmental damage, certainly compared to oil spills in the past, and certainly compared to uh, the ongoing environmental catastrophe that's happening in southern Louisiana, which is really the disappearance of that, that state's coastal marshes. Mr. Charbonnet, your assessment based upon uh, being on the ground down there on the shoreline. I, I've read the article, Chris. I think it's too early to tell. The article is written. He has two experts. One's a federal contract and one's a uh, indirect employee of BP. I don't, I don't, I'm not feeling this article. Um, he, you know, you don't just measure uh, disaster by how many fish and how many oysters are gone. I mean, pelicans, at the end of June, there were 1,550 pelicans that were captured, 835 of them were dead. We lose one pelican, it's too many. You know, pelicans were on the endangered species list until a year ago. So I, I, I can't agree with this article at all, and it's just completely too early to tell. If what was it that led you to decide to put the lead in this positive fashion, Michael? What led you to believe you'd have to put a piece together? What, what, what on balance led you to think that there's reasonable reasonable plausibility that this is going to end up rather well compared to what we thought it was going to be like. What led you that way? Well, this wasn't the story I went down to Louisiana to write. Um, I was actually reporting something very different. But, okay. uh, in fact, all the scientists I talked to, and he's wrong, there were four scientists quoted in, in that, uh, that pretty short article, talked a lot about how, you know, they showed me the data. And they said that this wasn't the kind of impacts they were expecting. It's really funny now to hear everybody saying, like, well, we have no idea what's going to happen. Um, it's way too early to tell if this, you know, what kind of impacts we're going to see. What I keep saying is, now you tell us? Because for the last three months, all I've heard is that this is the worst environmental catastrophe in the history of the country. Well, the question I have is what we is the question that would loom has loomed now for the, all these weeks and months now is that you get the, the, the Gulf of Mexico is pretty deep and that oil sinks and it goes out there. And then it, we were always wondering how many years or months certainly would it be coming back to haunt us over its own time span? We wouldn't get all the damage right away. It would come in depending on storm conditions and currents. How do you know it's not out there in bulk, just as bad as we thought it was? Perhaps four million barrels of it still out there. Well, we, we don't know. Ever. There's, there's a lot that we don't know. That's certainly true. It's so kind of nice to, to hear the kind of alarmists finally admitting that we don't know how bad this is going to be. And in oil spills in the past, there have been some long-term impacts. The Exxon Valdez, for example, the fisheries haven't entirely recovered. Um, there have been some birds have had some reproductive problems, but certainly not the kind of environmental catastrophe that we've been hearing about. This is lighter, and this is lighter oil. It's a much warmer gulf, and the Mississippi r River water kept the water kept a lot of that oil away from the shore. We heard that this was going to be a catastrophe for the coastal marshlands. Well, in fact, so far there have been about 350 acres of oiled marshlands when every year Louisiana is losing 50, 000, 15,000 acres, you know, just through, through man-made processes that were already happening. Like, like one of the scientists from the Audubon Society of all places told me this is like a sunburn on a cancer patient. Well, let me get back to Mr. Charbonnet. Give me the anecdotal. What's been happening on the shoreline down there in the New Orleans area? What are you getting in terms of daily reports on damage to the wildlife, the fisheries, uh, everything you're trying to get down there in terms of food and employment? Well, Chris, let's talk about the 358 acres he's talking about. That has everything to do with not wanting to lose 358 more acres. 
The oil is in the marsh, which means it's in the grass. If it's in the grass, it's in the seminal environment of the ecosystem. It's directly related to the food chain. If there's no grass, there's no shrimp. If there's no shrimp, there's no oyster, and on and on and on and on. Today, you cannot buy an oyster in the city of New Orleans. The largest oyster distribution freshwater shop in America is closed. Now, that's a direct effect on this storm. And this storm cannot just be calculated in fish and shrimp. There is a psychological damage here. There's a layering of depression that goes on and on. Our very vortex of our culture is at risk. Your reaction, Michael. And I also want to know about if this if this oil's gone below the surface and has largely disappeared, so we don't know if it's still there. My question is this: Can it can it uh, evaporate below the surface of the water? Does it need the sunshine to evaporate? Can it evaporate underwater in depth? Well, let me first. I mean, I, I'm sorry. If, I'm sorry if he's depressed about 350 acres of oiled marshes. But Louisiana has lost more than 2,000 square miles of coastal marshes in the last century. That's why he should be depressed. And a lot of that was because of the oil and gas industry. This oil is really just, you know, it's a blip on that scale. And some of the worst critics of the oil industry in the scientific community were telling that. As for the oil under the water, you know, that's certainly a question. I think there's a lot of there was a lot of fear that you're going to start seeing much uh, lower dissolved oxygen levels. And in fact, you have seen some slight oxygen depletion, but nothing compared to the kind of hypoxia that you already have in the Gulf from agricultural runoff in the Mississippi Basin. So again, this is not to, uh, you know, I hold no brief for BP in this. I think, uh, you know, this, they're just as, you know, they, they screwed up just as badly if there's not a lot of environmental damage if, as they would have if there's huge amounts of environmental damage. You know, these rigs are not supposed to blow up and 11 people have died and that's a real tragedy yeah. but the fact is you know there, we're not seeing the kind of environmental damage that uh, that and if people are depressed it may be because people are making such a big deal about this environmental damage well you know what I, I made a big deal about it and may continue to because I fear for it I haven't hyped it for any reason I gotta tell you I have worried about the damage to our environment to especially North America is the only one we've got this land mass of ours and these waterways and I have worried about it and this this is the first positive report I've gotten. Michael, that's why uh, I have been concerned, not because I want to hype this baby, because there's nothing to hype about it. It's, to me, it's been a tragedy from day one. Bernard Charbonnet, sir, thank you for joining us with your uh, reports on life down there. Michael, thank you. I guess congratulations you, if you turn out to be right, because if you're right, that's great news.